Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week's topic, guys, is something that you guys have all been asking me for for a while, especially with regard to the pandemic that's going on. Everybody wants to talk about swing trading, long-term investing. So what I did this week, guys, is I went and I scanned seven, 800 stocks, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did when I scanned them. I picked out three or four ideas that I like, things that you can be watching over the next couple few days, over the next week, so that you can take advantage of this market. Now, I also, in the beginning of the video, talk about the current market environment and how irrational exuberance has just taken over, especially the NASDAQ, but even the spiders. I mean, the NASDAQ isn't that far off. It's all time high, despite what's going on out in the world. 35 million people unemployed, inflation super low, governments pumping money into the markets, you know, propping it up artificially propping it up, you could say. My point I'm simply making is do not expect this to last. Six to 18 months, guys, we are gonna have a serious pullback. It's gonna be nasty. So how do you navigate the markets going forward considering and accounting for the environment that we're in. So that's a topic that I'm gonna talk about today. It's mainly, almost entirely based off of swing trading, a little bit of core trading, and even some investing advice um, as well. So I pick a few stocks out for you. We talk a little bit about relative strength, relative weakness, what your modus operandi should be going forward with regard to how extended the market is. Should you be looking for long ideas? Should you be looking for short ideas? etc. and so forth. So I think it's a good lecture. It's about 50, 60 minutes long, which is pretty normal for my lectures. Also, I want to apologize for the background, guys. I'm having my office um, redone a little bit. Not crazy, but just redone a little bit. So I'm actually trading from the kitchen right now, which is beautiful. Why? Because if you have a laptop and maybe even one external monitor, like I have one of those Asus 16-inch monitors, those super thin ones, that's what I'm trading from, guys. So the beauty of that is you can trade from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection and a laptop, and if you want, add a second monitor. And with regard to swing trading, you only need one monitor, okay? So again, apologize about the background, but at least it's something a little fresh, a little different. If you like this video, please click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. I'm Jared Wesley. Let's get to it. So this week's topic is going to be swing trading, scanning for a watch list. And it's not just a scanning lecture, okay? Meaning a lot, a lot of people do ask me, hey, how do you scan for swing trades? Um, you know, how do you scan for intraday trades and swing trades as well? But we've been getting a lot of questions given the market environment. And I think there's a lot of folks out there that are looking to take advantage of this. Meaning we had that big pullback a couple months ago with coronavirus. Uh, the markets moved back up significantly, which we're going to look at here in a second. Uh, and now they want to know, hey, what's the future going to bring for long-term investments, for mid-term investments, etc.? cetera? Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to do a lecture kind of addressing that topic and what you need to be looking for when you're looking for swing trades. And on top of it, on top of it, I actually did some swing trading scanning last night. I went through about 800 stocks last night, uh, and I have about three or four ideas um, that are up and coming that I think might be interesting to you guys. Okay, so it's a combination of looking at current markets. We're going to talk a little bit about finding relative strength and weakness, uh, as well as some, some stocks that I'm looking at going forward here. Okay, so let's start as always, because this is what you always do. I want to stress this one more time. This is what you always do. Whether you're scanning for a one minute trade, whether you're scanning for a yearly trade, you're always going to compare the market to what you're doing. Okay. So when I look here, this is a weekly chart of the QQQ. We'll take a look at the spiders here in just a second, but the QQQ, for those of you who don't know, is the NASDAQ 100. Okay. Um, the spiders is the S&P 500. So when you take a look here, um, you can see back, and this remember, it's a weekly chart, so each bar represents one week. So if you go back a couple months to like March, April, okay, um, we pulled back pretty significantly, like 165-ish, give or take. Um, and now, as of yesterday, not today, as of yesterday, we were at 229, okay? Well, the all-time high is like 237 or something like that. Think about what I just said. 
the world economy is falling apart. There's 35 million unemployed people in this country. Some industries are never coming back. Airline injuries, hospitality industries, hotels, etc. All that stuff, restaurants, even oil. It's all getting crushed and the market is just in la la land, right? Chasing butterflies. And a lot of that obviously is, is irrational exuberance, optimism, as well as what? the Fed pumping tons and tons of money into the markets. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is going to stop. But even if we push all of that aside, because we're chart readers, right? We let the chart guide us. If we push all of that aside, we are still extended into overhead supply, which is resistance. So what is the normal modus operandi when we are extended into a prior pivot high? So extended into resistance equals question mark. What is the question mark? Extended into resistance equals pullback, right? That's the general term we use. Anytime you're up multiple bars or you have a hundred plus percent retracement and you're nearing a significant pivot to the left in this case an all-time high pivot in the market we're expecting a pullback okay so why is that important well if you're swing trading which is typically 60 minute chart daily chart weekly chart and i'm on a weekly chart of the queues and the weekly chart is extended into resistance and you want to hold a trade for a week or two you need to understand that there's a better chance, a higher likelihood that the market's going to pull back over the next month rather than going higher. Now, again, this whole move is a bit irrational. So it's possible we break 240 because this move has been somewhat irrational also. But the likelihood here says over the next month or two, the market should pull back. Okay. And remember where, where we are is important, which is resistance, but where we came from is equally important. It's not like we're bouncing from the $220 area. We bounced from like the 165, 170 area. So imagine running three marathons in a row and then you get to the end and somebody, you know, and, and now somebody says, now you got to wear like a 20 pound belt for the next marathon. That's what the resistance is. So you're going to slow down. In this case, we're going to pull back. So going forward, the challenge that we're going to see here today in this lecture is that most of the stocks that you're going to find, okay, are long ideas because the market's so strong. But if our bias going forward is somewhat bearish, what do we do? And that's going to be the $64,000 question that nobody has a genuine answer to. Sure, we're going to try to scan for relative weakness and short ideas, but you're going to come to find there's not that many of them. Okay, so what do we do? We'll, we'll talk about it here in a couple minutes, okay? This is the weekly chart of the S&P 500. Now note, similar concept, just not as strong, right? I mean, honestly, guys, I, I still can't believe the Qs are almost 98% of an all-time high. It's, it's mind-bending to me. And I get it's made up largely of Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and they're not hurting nearly as bad as the average person, but still. So the S&P has bounced, I would say, just eyeballing this up from the top at 340 to the bottom at 220, about 70%, okay? Normally, and I drew this line here on purpose, this, this red line here is, this is normally where you would expect the market to pull back, right? So you're bouncing off 220, you do about a 50% retracement here, give or take, all right, into some overhead supply, and you would expect a pullback. It never happened. The market left bottoming tails and continued higher. So this is where that irrational exuberance comes in. Okay. It is what it is. It might be irrational, but we still have to respect it. The point though is we are getting closer to resistance. We are tired and a pullback is more likely. The spy on the, you know, again, is a bit more extended. So I think the pullback is closer on, I'm sorry, on the cues. The cues are a bit more extended. So I expect the pullback on the cues to be sooner. But I expect a pullback is the whole point here that we're, we're getting to, okay? Now, one more quick comment, and this is a little off topic, but it's on topic at the same time. About two months ago, all right, give or take, February, March, I think it was March, all right, I put this monthly chart of the S&P up, and I put these lines on it, okay? And these were areas in which you would consider buying up the market for long-term. When I mean long-term, I'm talking 10-year, 15-year investments, Okay? Um, so the point I'm making is you could have taken, added to your long-term portfolio in this 233 area when the market went down to like 215, 220. 
This, I promise you, hear me out on this, it's important. I promise you, you will get another opportunity to do this. I'm not saying the market might pull back. to. I'm telling you it's going to pull back to 233 again. It's going to pull back to this area. All right. So if you miss that pullback, all right, adding to your long-term IRA, 401k, or just your long-term portfolio in general, maybe you have some VT Sachs or SPY ETF. If you're looking to, you know, retire in 10, 20, 30 years, make sure you buy the market on the pullbacks, guys. It's the one mistake that most novice traders and investors make is they get fearful when the market pulls back. No, that's an opportunity. Now, it's a different opportunity if you're three years away from retirement or two years away from retirement. But if you're 10, 20, 30 years away from retirement, you should be buying up as much of the market as you can during every single serious pullback. I'm not talking about when it drops 2%. I mean, this was a nasty pullback here. The market dropped darn near, you know, over 100 points here. Okay, so don't be that fearful person. Be the aggressive buyer during major pullbacks. But make sure it's predetermined before it happens. Draw these lines on your chart so that when it happens, you're prepared for it. It's not some whimsical thing. Okay, I think I showed you guys a couple few weeks ago, but the average investor over the last 20 years, this is sad and pathetic, I think it was the last 12 years, returned a 1.9% average return. Year over year, 1.9%. In the longest bullish run in market history and the second largest percentage run in market history, 1.9% average return. That's pathetic. The market averaged like 9, 10 points a year on average, and you got less than two. Buy on the pullbacks and keep adding all the way up. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about, guys, is just an easy, quick scanner. I've brought this up in the past, so it's not new. You've seen me bring this up. But everyone's like, hey, what scanner to use? I use dollar gainers and dollar losers, okay? And dollar gainers and dollar losers looks like this. I use it on TradeStation. I put it up here in big, bold print. It's TradeStation. So don't email me. Don't PM me. Don't ask me. It's TradeStation. I use dollar gainers and losers, and it works fine for me, okay? But if you don't have TradeStation, or if you want something that's free, and you, maybe you don't have a trading platform, just use FinViz, okay? They have a free version. It's literally finviz.com here. It looks like this, okay? Literally, this is the webpage right now. I'm on the webpage, okay? Now, how do I do this? I go through them quick, guys. Now, if you want to do it slower, that's fine. But I literally put my cursor over A. It shows a chart. I don't like it. Next, I go AAL. I don't like it. Next, I go AN. I don't like it. AAP. I don't like it. Apple. I don't like it. AAXN. I don't like it. AB. I don't like it. Literally, I just go down this list almost that fast. Okay, so there's 1,084 stocks on this list. I did mid cap, so over 2 billion in market cap, average volume over 500,000 shares. Country, United States, price over $5. I don't trade penny stocks very often, especially swing trading penny stocks, especially pharmaceutical biotech stocks. I don't do it. My point is this is free. I don't want to hear any excuses. This is free. Now, if you want, you can also click. And once I click on A, it brings up a bigger chart of it. All right. So I personally, if I find a stock that I like on Finviz, I just type it into my platform because my platform is something I'm much more familiar with, right? So I just type it into my platform, all right? So one of the first stocks that I brought up that I thought was interesting was ACAD, and we're going to talk about it. I went down this list literally, ding, 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 ding. Ooh, ACAD's an interesting chart. Let me click on it, right? Now I would bring this up, and look, they even have a double top line already. And we'll talk about this in a couple minutes, all right? So I brought it up on my platform, and I looked at it on the daily, the 60, the weekly chart. Okay, so you see how easy and quick you can you, you can use a free service to scan. But obviously, what's one of the major criteria here? Knowing what you're scanning for. And I'm not here to talk about that today. All right, that's not today's topic, knowing exactly what to scan for, because that's a long, long topic. That's not even a 30 minute or a one hour topic. Okay, but you can use this to scan through. It might take you an hour to scan through a thousand stocks. That's all it should really take you about a minute of stock, give or take um, something like that. I'm not, sorry, a minute a page, my apologies, about a minute a page and there's 55 pages, okay? Literally about a minute a page. You're only gonna see one or two per page that you actually wanna look at. And even of those, most of them you're not gonna look at because they're not that good, okay? So now, whoops, why didn't that, there we go. 
So that's what I use, all right? Or that's what you should be using. I use dollar gainers and losers. It's very simple, very straightforward. You can add any parameters you want. If you want the paid for version, go for it. This is not some advertisement for Finviz. I'm just telling you it's free and it's actually pretty decent, okay? So we're always looking for something, right? I went over this chart a couple few months ago and we're looking for stocks that are putting in double bottoms, double tops, gapping over pivots, breakouts, three bar plays, buy setups. But the reason I'm bringing this chart up, guys, is because there's too many of you out there that you scan in the moment. And let me explain what I mean when I say you scan in the moment. You're like, oh, that chart doesn't have something I can buy today or tomorrow, it's junk. No, that's not how it works with swing trading with if you're scanning for gaps then yeah you want something that you can trade today in the first hour or two of the market okay but with swing trading you need to keep stocks on the list that are developing all right i'll repeat that you need stocks on the list that are developing okay so you might have a stock that's a week away from forming the exact pattern you want but right now it's actually in the process of forming that pattern Okay, does that make sense? So you might have a stock that's looking like a breakout or a breakdown, but you need a couple more days of rest. Put that stock on your list, revisit it in a couple days, put an alert on it so it alerts you in two days to take a look at it, okay? Finviz does not have pre-market charts, but we're talking about swing trading here. So why are you looking at the pre-market chart if we're talking about swing trading? All right, you're looking at daily, weekly, sometimes monthly charts, and the pre-market's not gonna be that important. Now, don't get me wrong, it might help you get in sooner, but keep in mind, a lot of swing traders aren't intraday traders. So when they scan in the evening time, they have to put their orders in in the evening time, right? They scan for charts and go, wow, I really like these three ideas. Let me put my order in now because I have to go to work in the morning. That's not everybody, but that's a, you know that's a good number of people. So you wanna keep in mind what a chart is doing. We broke this chart down and we're like, wow, it's breaking above the trend line. It's putting in a triple, quadruple bottom. And this is a stock that might ultimately go higher because every time it retests the low, it bounces. So you wanna know what is the expectation for this? And that's the way you're going to approach a lot of swing trades. It's not what has it done today. It's what's it going to do over the next week. So let's take a look. Okay, here's a good example. This is what I would consider a damn near perfect trade. Okay, so wide range bar, breaking out over a pivot, breaking out over another pivot, two narrow range bars right here. Now, this is a three bar play on the daily. Actually, it turns out to be a four bar play, but you don't know that it's going to put in this third bar right here, do you? So what do you do if you see wide bar, narrow bar, and you want to buy it on this third day, but it doesn't trigger? You don't take it off your list. You keep it on your list with an alert. And that alert should be below, and I'm going to make that clear, that alert should be below $27, right? Below $27, because you need to give yourself time to get into the trade. Or, okay, or hear me out, if you don't see it trigger on day number three, at the end of the day, you might actually put an order in at 27 with a stop at 25.50. Maybe you have to go off to work. So the night before, put an order to buy it at 27 and a stop loss at 25.50. So if it triggers, you're good to go. And this is what I consider, like I said, to be a perfect trade. But you're not gonna find these every single day. It's nice when you find them, but you're not gonna find these trades every single day, okay? So in the real world, they don't all look quite this perfect, all right? Here is another example of what I consider a perfect trade. Here is a stock that's consolidating. You have two opportunities to buy this thing. You can buy it on the breakout over the red line. That's, you know, that's one choice. Buy it on the breakout over the red line at like 975. That's honestly where I would get in. Why? Because you don't know where and when or if this three bar play is going to form. So this is another example of a stock where you sit here and go, wow, we're consolidating at the prior pivot high. This is a weekly chart, by the way, weekly chart. How many weeks do you have to wait for this to trigger? Almost a month. Is it starting to make more sense now when I say don't take these stocks off your list? It took Flex almost two months for this thing to actually trigger. 
Okay, so don't take it off your list. When it finally triggers, you'll be ready for it. But a lot of people put these and they're like, oh, well, it didn't trigger this week. Oh, it didn't trigger next week. I'm taking it off my list. And then it, they look back a month later and they're like, oh my gosh, it's up $3. Why didn't I have that on my list? You did. You just took it off your list. Okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit about relative strength, relative weakness. I don't want you to be confused with this chart because there's a, a pink line plus a big circle around it. On the left, we have a chart of a stock and on the right, we have a chart of the market. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the overall trend, which one is stronger? The stock is stronger, right? The stock is clearly in an uptrend, okay? Higher highs and higher lows, above the moving average. Most of the time, we dip below the moving average here. And the market is actually below the moving average, okay? And trending lower on the daily chart. Now, we know on the weekly and monthly chart, okay, that this stock is trending higher, because of the 200 period moving average is going up. But on the daily chart over the last month, the stock is trending down. But during this pullback, during this month pullback, this stock is hanging out near all time highs, right? It pulled back very shallow and it's consolidating in a sideways manner. So this is a stock you wanna keep on your list. Now remember, I'm going back to my original point. It might not be ready today. But over the last month, it's shown so much relative strength, you need to be checking on this stock every day or every other day to see if it's forming a pattern. Does that make sense? So again, it might not be ready right now, and it may never give you that pattern. But if it's stronger than the market over the last month and the market starts to bounce back up, this stock is going to lead the way. So you're starting to see here, being a good swing trader requires some patience. It's not a what have you done for me lately. It's not a one minute chart where it's like, all right, I'm, you know, if it doesn't give me a pattern in 10 minutes, I'm done with this thing. Sometimes it takes a week. Sometimes it takes a month for these patterns to formulate. And many of you are missing them because you're taking them off your list or you're ignoring them. Going, oh, it's not ready yet. Okay. So this is a great example of relative strength, but there's not a great entry yet, right? There's not a great entry yet. Here's another example. Stock on a weekly chart, okay? Market on a weekly chart. So we're floundering around over here. We get a kind of a wide range bar, narrow range bar, and kind of a, a mediocre three bar play. I say mediocre because this is a really, really big bar. Pulls back, moves higher. Now, take a look. Right here on this buy setup, around $22, give or take, the stock is clearly uptrending. It pulled back right to the moving average and just above support, right? Support's like 21 bucks, so it's pulling back right above that area. So the location items here are pretty good, okay? Pull back to price support, minor support, rising moving average from the top of the pivot to the bottom of the pivot, about 50%. So you have all three location items. You also have a stock that's showing strength to the market, okay? So while the market was pulling back, yeah, the stock pulled back a little, but it hasn't been floundering around the way the market has been for the last month and a half, two months, okay? So now the market finally finds some support, right? This is a support area. The market's extended, extended into support. You're expecting a bounce. Now, to be clear, I'm not necessarily expecting an all-time high in the market here. I'm not necessarily expecting that this 100% retracement will put in a new high. That's not it at all. But because you're extended into support, you should get at least a 50% retracement. Well, 50% retracement in the market is probably going to be 100% retracement in this stock because the stock has already shown relative strength. Okay, so it's not only is it a nice buy setup with all three location items, it's showing relative strength to the market. So when the market starts to bounce back up, it makes this trade a lot easier to take. So these are things you need to factor in when you're looking to swing trade. One more example. Whoops, I think that's the same example. All right. Nope, different example. Okay. Here's another example of a stock. Okay. Stock is what? going higher in a stage two uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows, rising moving average. And what do we have here? About a three month consolidation, all of March, April, May, June, more than that. The market's in an uptrend also, pulls back, 
bounces, pulls back, but again, finds support in this area. Again, we're not expecting this stock, okay, to put in an all, or the, the market to put in an all-time high. But look at the kind of strength this stock exhibited when the market pulled back for three, four weeks. It consolidated near the highs. So this is something that when the market finds support and starts to bounce, you might want to put an order in it for at 38 bucks as a swing trade. So 38 by say 34, and you're timing it right with the market. All right. Now, back to some of the stocks that I scanned for last night. All right. I put a list together of about 20 ideas. I didn't get through all 1,080 of those. I got through about seven or 800, and I found about 20 that I thought were interesting. Okay. And the first one I just talked about a couple minutes ago was ACAD, A C A D. All right. So I'm looking at this on a daily chart. Now, why is this relative strength? Well, it's relative strength because the market got absolutely crushed, right, in March and April. And then in May here, it's bounced back like nobody's business. But take a look at this. This stock did not get hammered during that time, right? This stock was climbing from early middle of March all the way up to the middle of April, had a relatively shallow pullback, bounced 100%, pulled back 100%. So you could have made an argument with this pivot, this pivot, and this pivot, that maybe, maybe ACAD might transition into a possible stage three or, or pull back into a stage four. But now that we have this five, six, seven day consolidation, it starts to become a lot more interesting because of the higher low, right? We had this tug of war right here. You expect extended into resistance to pull back. This is expected. What happened right here, there's nothing wrong with this. This is normal modus operandi. The stock was tired. There was resistance. It pulled back. The good news is the retracement level was not that deep, right? This pullback's like 30%. Can we take the bottom of the pivot at 30, the top at like 53, the pullback is eight bucks. Not a big retracement. That's a very bullish sign. It went 100% back to the high, smacked its head, pulled back, and then went back to the high and consolidated. So now we're getting a correction through time, right? This is a price correction on the pullback. This is a time correction. So this is a recent trade. This is now, okay? I don't know what ACAT is doing today. I haven't looked. But this is something I'm going to keep on my watch list as a potential swing trade over the next week, all right? It's something I'm gonna keep on my watch list over the next week as a potential swing trade. Get in above this area at like 53 bucks. Your stop loss is gonna be right around 50. Honestly, I'd give it a little bit of room under that area, maybe a dollar under that area, okay? So it may be pulling back today, I don't know, but here's the thing, I'm not gonna take it off my list. I mean, it's showing a lot of strength in this range of 45 to 53 bucks, okay? so. We'll keep it on the list. Doesn't mean you have to trade it. You only trade it when it gives you exactly what you want. But it's something that should be on your list. Okay, now, again, I don't know what BRX is doing today, but here's a stock that just fell off a cliff. I mean, this thing got borderline climactic. It dropped from 22 down to eight bucks, bounced, pulled back, bounced, pulled back, bounced, and it gapped up yesterday. And this line in the sand over $12 looks like what a possible transition from a stage two uptrend into a stage four downtrend into a stage one consolidation back into a possible stage two uptrend okay so this is that stage one in this case a lot wider than normal but considering the times it's not that crazy so if we can find a way to get this thing above 12 bucks it's interesting but because of the volatility and because it has so much room back up, give it a little bit extra room on the stop loss. Don't put your stop loss under yesterday's low and have this thing at like a 30 cent stop loss. That's crazy. There's nothing more frustrating than being right on a trade, but getting shaken out of the trade, right? That's happened to all of you at some point. You're, you're right on the direction of the trade, but your stop loss was too tight and you got shaken out. Remember a couple weeks back, we talked about half the shares, double the stop. That's a good approach for swing trading, especially if you're new to swing trading. So you want to get in this thing around $12, $12.10, 12 
But instead of using a 50 cent stop or even a dollar stop, I'd give it a couple bucks. Sure, it's gonna take a move back to $16 to make any kind of appreciable money on this thing, but at least you're protected at that point. And hopefully, it's a genuine transition, and what will happen is it will move to 16, pull back to 14, and then continue higher. And you can add shares on that possible pullback. Nobody knows the future, but that's why we have stop losses, okay? So this is another one, BRX, that I scanned for yesterday, I find interesting, and I'm gonna have on my swing watch list. Now, what about this one? So you take a look at GIS. This stock was kind of chugging along sideways, boring, sideways, boring, sideways, boring. And then all of a sudden with this Corona thing, this thing just went nuts. So straight craziness. Okay. Pull back, bounce, pull back, bounce, pull back, bounce. I'm nuts. So, but now that it's finally over this area, it's bounced up, put in a new high. Now it pulled back. And the reason I'm asking, Hey, let's discuss the positives and negatives. Well, some of the positives are it's been very strong, right? Overall, for the last month and a half, it bounced from 46 to 64 bucks has been very, very strong. It put in a new high, that's positive, okay? It's got a buy setup, that's positive. Some of the negatives here, guys, are the level and depth of retracement here, right? I mean, this stock pulled back but it broke below that 50% retracement area. It broke below that minor price support, level two price support area. That's not really what we want to see. So you have a decision to make on this. For me, this is a stock that I'm interested in, but I probably wouldn't necessarily go full boat on this thing. I'd probably lower my expectations and maybe start this position with a small lot. Okay, which I sometimes do with swing trading and then add back as it starts to look better. Okay, but this is one that's not an easy trade to take. A lot of people just immediately, oh, it's a buy setup. But when you take a look at the level and the depth of retracement, it's about 70 or 80%. And that's not really what you want to see. You want to see the stock exhibit its strength. Okay, and the other concern here is our overall opinion of the market over the next month is likely lower. Well, if we're taking a buy setup that's already pulled back 80% and we think the market's likely lower, makes it an even tougher trade to take, doesn't it? Okay, put that checklist together. Remember pilots and checklists? Put that checklist together, okay? Now, next, ICPT. Little audience participation here, all right? What is interesting about this chart, guys? Tell me, give me, give me two things. Two things that are interesting about this chart. Two reasons why I would even have this on my list. Think about it for a second. I'll give you like five seconds to think about it. Why would I put ICPT on my potential swing trading list? There's technically three big reasons, but just give me two. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. There's a couple people that a lot of you actually have some have it right. The, the most prevailing answer that I'm getting, the most common answer that I'm getting is volume. Guys, look at this volume. Not from yesterday, but from last Friday. This stock put in ridiculous volume. I mean, the largest volume this stock has done in over a year happened last Friday, right? Because this was Tuesday, that's Friday, and you sit there and go, hmm, interesting. A Friday before a holiday and this stock puts in the most volume. But here's the thing. It put in all that volume at support and left a massive bottoming tail. So what do we know is an unequivocal fact here, guys? I'll ignore the red bar for a second. Tell me about the bottoming tail. What do we know? It's a factual statement. There are a lot of people who bought this stock in that area. Bottoming tail with a massive volume spike by definition means a boatload of people got into this stock at this, whatever that is, 76, 77, $78 area. Tons of them. So normally you would say, sweet, double bottom retest, 
bottoming tail, ridiculous volume. The stock's going in one direction, straight up. But then what happened the next day? What happened the next day? Sellers came and completely took out every single one of those buyers. I want you to think about what I'm getting at here conceptually. You're in war and you overwhelm the enemy. You, I mean, you're getting pushed back, you're getting pushed back, you're getting pushed back, and finally you say enough of this crap, and then you drive right back into enemy territory. You got millions of troops behind you, and then the next day the enemy literally just presses a button and nukes you. That's exactly what happened to these buyers. The buyers got nuked, okay? All those people that bought this stock in here, done. So, who cares if it's news? It doesn't matter what the reason is. The point is, with that many buyers and this bottoming tail, this stock should have only done one thing. It should have only gone higher, period, end of discussion. That bottoming tail at this area of support with that kind of volume suggests should have only gone higher. And it gets completely engulfed the next day. I'm only thinking about one direction for this stock, lower. Does that mean it's going to go lower? No. But I can only think about it in one direction right now, okay? I can only think about it in one direction, and that direction is short. Because that's how significant the volume is with that bottoming tail. So what will we do here? We would look to wait till this stock got into the $75 area, potentially look to short it with a stop around $80 to $83, a wide stop, and you try to trade it down to this pivot area of like 57 bucks. So you have like $18 worth of room, okay? So you look at all that and you have to not just look at the chart, you have to look at the bars too and see what they represent, okay? So now, hold on, we're not done. This is what the weekly chart of ICPT looks like. What does it look like now to you? It looks like a sell setup doesn't it? Stock bounced up to resistance up here. It failed, went all the way down to support and bounced. And now you have multiple topping tails. And if it gets under this area, 73, 74 bucks, whatever it is, it looks like it's going to go lower down to like 50. So yes, it's a wide stop, especially if you use the weekly chart. The risk to reward isn't great on the weekly chart. It's maybe two to one, but you might be able to go back to the daily chart and use the turnaround bar, because that's what it is, use the turnaround bar, bearish turnaround bar, that area as your possible entry. And remember, this is a new stock. I mean, I looked at this last night, so this would make my list. But that's how you have to talk through these trades, okay? All right, move on. Here's another example. CLDR on a weekly chart. And you're going, Jared, there's nothing interesting about this chart other than the double bottom and the breakage of the trend line. Remember earlier we talked about patience. Swing trades don't always just, hey, I found it. I'm going to trade it tomorrow. That does happen. Of course that happens. But it doesn't happen all the time. We need to exhibit more patience. So we have a stock here that's clearly in a downtrend. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Downtrend. Okay. Bounces back up puts in a relatively equal high, relatively equal high, pulls back, puts in an equal low, massive bottoming tail. But during this bottoming tail, it also broke the trend line, right? Over here, it broke it, it's pulling back and it's kind of bouncing above it again. So now we have a possible, okay? Possible double bottom stage one retest and failure that might be moving back into a stage two uptrend. But to really feel good about this, obviously we'd like to see it above $12. But still, you're going, but geez, Jared, I don't know. This is again where you drill down, okay? So let's go to CLDR, move from the weekly, and let's go to the daily, okay? So now we're on the daily. So there's that, that retest that we saw, 
okay? On the weekly chart, we saw that big bottoming tail. That's what it looks like on a daily. Moves back up, it's chopping around in this area. It finally breaks above whatever that is, $9, moves higher. Now, there's a question up there. It says, what are we looking for? Does anybody know why I would even consider this chart? Now, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you this is the best chart I've ever seen. But what would we be looking for on this chart to maybe tempt us to trade it? Thank you, Luke. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pull back to level two price support. That's exactly correct. 100% right. What, had, what happened here is stock broke out. So we, we know it wants to go higher because of this pivot retest with a massive bottoming tail and price higher prices. Bottoming tail, retest, higher prices. It consolidated in this area. It was struggling to get over like nine bucks, give or take. And it finally broke out. But note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days up. It's tired. It's tired. What would be an ideal situation for to happen here? Do I know what's going to happen? I have no idea if it's going to happen. But I'm going to keep it on my list because I would love for this stock, CLDR, to pull back to the red line, pink line, whatever color that is, and give me a buy setup. Maybe a two or three day pullback right to this area, give or take, right where my cursor is, right there. Give me a buy setup, 50% retracement, level two price support, beautiful. And give me a buy setup. This is what I mean by being patient. Now, you might check this stock three days from now, and it might be at $12. Oh, well, there's nothing you can do about it, right? You might. You might find this stock three days from now, and it's just chopping around and not looking good. Oh, well, that's part of trading. That's why you have 50, 100, 200 stocks on your list, okay? But I look at this, and I go, hmm, on the weekly chart, it looks like an early possible transition. So let me drill down and see if there's any opportunity here. Well, I drill down. I go, okay, there's no immediate opportunity, but there might be opportunity in two or three days from now. Okay, put it on a list. Put it on a list. Yep, the ceiling becomes the floor. Now, we have another one. Now note, guys, this is real stuff. These are real, real things I scanned last night. This isn't like from a year ago or a month ago. These are happening now. And notice, you have decisions to make. Not every one of these charts just jumps off and smacks you in the face and goes, yes, I'm the one. They happen, like those earlier three-bar plays I showed you, but not every chart is like that. And you'll find certain market environments are more challenging to trade than others because the market gets really extreme in one direction or another. And it's really hard when the market's super strong to find a short idea. And it's really hard when the market's super strong to go long. You're stuck in a conundrum. So you have to be, I don't want to say more creative because that implies we're taking lower quality. I don't want to take lower quality, but you can drill down into the chart and maybe find yourself a trade still. Now, what do we have here? We have a daily chart of Grub where the stock had a massive gap down, bounced, pulled back and retest support, went a little bit below support, but retested, climbs all the way back up and then this happened ridiculous wide range green bar, okay? Huge, crazy volume. I don't care if it's earnings, it doesn't matter to me. That's irrelevant. I just know it's a wide range green bar that took out resistance with crazy volume. And then what do we have here? We have what I would consider an ascending triangle, a bull triangle. Some people might call it a flag, but it's got a relatively flat top with higher lows, which is the definition of a bull triangle or an ascending triangle. Call it a flag, whatever, semantics, okay? The only difference is when you would enter. But here's the rub. This stock gives you a decision to make. See, $60 was the line in the sand. And this stock is giving you a pattern, a legitimate pattern. And it's happening over a good two week period. So it's likely rested long enough, but we can't erase the topping tail. I mean, it, it happened. Sellers came in in that area. Is it crazy they came in there? No, why? Because the stock moved so big. I mean, in the big picture, that topping tail is not that significant because this bar is just so big. Now, if this topping tail was 50%, then I'd be concerned. 
right? But the topping tail, okay, is not that big. So I'm less concerned, but it's still there. Normally we'd get in at 60, not even blink, and the target would be this pivot over here, right? What is that, 68 bucks? You have like an $8 target. But now I have to be concerned with the topping tail. So if you do get in this at 60, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked, okay? Um, if there is a little bit of resistance at that topping tail. And this is what I meant by you have a decision to make. Some traders will say topping tail is no way I'm gonna take it. But I don't think this is a bad pattern, okay? I don't think this is a bad pattern, okay? Now, sometimes swing trades do come from our morning gap list, all right? Sometimes they do. See, last night I just used FinViz to scan. Why? Because I wanted to show you guys you can use FinViz to find good ideas. Every idea that I just showed you, those four ideas that I'm looking at, I found from FinViz. Why am I telling you this? Because I actually use dollar gainers and dollar losers. But I used a whole different program to find those ideas. A program that I don't use that much. What's the point in me saying that? Any scanner is usually good enough. Most scanners are good enough. Some are better than others, but most scanners are good enough. Okay, that's the point I'm making. You guys think there's some magic holy grail in my dollar gainers, dollar losers scan. There isn't. Most scanners are pretty decent these days, okay? So anyway, but let's say you do swing trading and you do intraday trading. Sometimes we get little gifts is what I call them, little gifts, where I look at a stock that may be on the gap list and I go, wow. I would not have had that on my swing watch list because it's a gap, right? But it's so good, we might make it into a swing trade. So let's take a look. So, so guys, let's be honest here. Before the gap, this is important, pay attention. Before this red bar, before this gap, I'm not gonna have this on a swing short list. There's no way in God's green earth am I gonna have this on a swing short list before the gap, right? Cover up the gap, and you're looking at this as possible bounce over 65 bucks, right? But with the gap, because of the gap, now it changes everything. We gapped under a pivot, under some green bars, and room back to 55 bucks. This is a possible swing trade that you cannot pre-scan for. You'll only see this when you're scanning for your pre-market gappers but it can still end up being a very good swing trade, okay? Exactly, Eric, it looked like a buy setup. So it's not likely something you would have on your short scan watch list when you're scanning daily charts. The gap had to happen for this to become interesting. And it only happened because, well, we scanned gappers in the pre-market because we're intraday traders also. So a person who does not intraday trade and they only swing trade might not find this chart. This gives you an opportunity now to say, all right, I can get in at 62.50, maybe even add it 61.50, and I'm gonna see if, I'm gonna hold a portion of my position, maybe a quarter, maybe a third, and I'm gonna try to ride it down to 55 bucks. So this turned into a swing trade. It started out as an intraday trade, turned into a swing trade, but you weren't likely gonna find this scanning your daily chart. You needed the gap list to find it, okay? Again, Guys, Vive, DG, this is you know, from a little while back, but nonetheless, see the red bar here, right there on my cursor is a red bar. Stock gapped over the red bar and over the consolidation. So this was a really good intraday trade, really good, but it wasn't a great swing trade on this day, right? So it gapped over the red bar, over the pivot, it's a great, intraday trade. Awesome. Fantastic intraday trade. But you really couldn't swing trade it on that day. But what happens? The next day, you get a narrow range resting day. And guys, I'm sure you've seen this before. Most of the time after a huge move, the next day is usually a narrow range quiet day. Not always, not always, but oftentimes after a big gap up or big gap down, the next day is usually a quiet narrow range day. Okay, so in this case, you get the gap up, you trade it on the intraday, and then the next day, you have a narrow range resting day. 
This is something what we would call a carryover list stock. Why am I bringing it up? Because anytime you have a gap over a red bar and over a pivot, usually you're changing the trend of that stock or you're, you're putting the current trend on steroids. And that's what's happening here, all right? So I don't know eventually what happened to this. Maybe it triggered, maybe it didn't. It's not the point. It's the concept that we're after here. Don't lose sight of these. Keep it on your list. If you truly have a gap this nice, see what happens the next day. And if you notice the next day is a narrow range consolidation, prepare yourself. Put that order in for 157 with a stop at 150 or 152. Same here on DG, gapped over multiple red bars, one pivot, two pivots. Next day, narrow range resting day, right? Narrow range resting day. Yeah, it should be, but here's the beauty of it. I can change it. See that? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, so you look at it, 128, 125.50, okay? It's beautiful, but... How many people, after they traded it on the gap day, took it off their list and never looked at it ever again? Guys, what I'm getting at here is this. Please treat this like a job. Treat it like a business. Treat it like something you're really actually serious about. It's not just what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me today? Think about the future, realizing that those two gaps on DG and Vive were pretty damn good gaps likely going to continue to push this stock higher. Does it mean you're going to get a trade entry the next couple days? No, but that's part of trading. We put trades on the watch list every day that we don't trade because they don't give us a pattern. I mean, heck, out of a 15 stock gap list, we might only trade three of those stocks. That means 12 of them didn't give us a good enough pattern. Swing trading's no different, okay? And for those of you out there, because I get this comment a lot, it's off topic, but it's on topic. Yes, guys, yes, 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 you can swing trade and use the three bar play with Forex. You can use it with futures, E-minis, you can use it with anything you want. Here's a triple bottom retest, wide range bar, taking out multiple pivots, narrow range resting bar, enter here, stop here, target here, okay? This is a Forex chart. I don't even trade Forex. But guess what? Tell me this. If I took off the top and I took off the price, it doesn't matter what it is, does it? Take off the top where it says Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Take off the price on the right. It's just a chart, isn't it? It's just a red and green candlestick chart. That's all it is. Here's another example. Wide range bar breaking out. Now, the negative here is obviously a little bit of the junk to the left, right? There is a little bit of junk to the left. The point is, is... It happens on everything, everything. And no, this is not a three-bar play right here. This is not, not, not a three-bar play. And I don't really consider this a three-bar play either because I'm still considering this extended and tired from this move. That one little resting bar is not enough for me to call that really a three-bar play. Um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. For those of you that always ask me, can you, you know, does this work in Forex? Yes, it does. Okay, yes, it does. Now, Brings me to one more thing. I'm going to end on this here. We're going to end here in a minute. Unmall's done an unbelievable job this year in the swing trading newsletter, guys. My percentage might be slightly off on the S&P, and it's probably worse now because it's down today. You guys are up 21.5%, and the market's down. If Unmall is a hedge fund manager, he'd, he'd be richer than Ray Dalio this year, okay? Why? Because he's beating the market by damn near 30%. Okay, so for those of you that are in the swing newsletter, know this because you're taking advantage of it. My point is, if you're brand new, focus on one or the other. If you're brand new to trading, focus on swing trading or focus on intraday trading. But as you gain some experience, six months in, 12 months in, you should be doing both. Okay, you should be doing both. Okay, does that make sense? Got it? Because one is wealth building where you can have higher risk, not in the beginning. In the beginning, you're gonna take small risk, but you should still be able to get 20 to 50% a year swing trade. Now, some of you go, oh, that's not very much. No, it's a, I won't use that word. It's a heck of a lot of money, all right? 
20 to 40% per year is a lot of money. Take a $50,000 account and add 25% a year for five years and tell me where your account is. Seriously, go online and do it. Get one of those compound interest calculators and take a 50K account and make 25% a year for five years and tell me it's not a lot of money, okay? You should, in my opinion, have a separate swing trading account because you don't wanna be mixing um, your cost average. Like if you're swing trading Apple and then you intraday trade Apple, the cost average is gonna get all messed up. You should have a separate account for it. You don't need as much money to swing trade um, because you're not really subjected because you're not getting in and out of trades every day the way you are intraday trading. So you can get away with less money and you don't have to really the pattern day trading rule to bother you nearly as much. Negatives, you only have two to one leverage. Okay, um, which makes it a little bit, you know, a little bit tougher if you want to increase your risk. Okay, my point is that's incredible. Twenty-one and a half percent, and the market's down seven. So the people out there, oh, that's not that good. No, anybody out there telling you you're making thousands of percent a year is full of you know what. If they were, they'd be Warren Buffett. That's the fact. Okay, they wouldn't be pitching this crap to you. All right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, um, and. Those ideas, and I'll bring a couple of them back up for you, all right? These are things I'm actually looking at right now. I'm actually looking at ACAD, all right? I'm actually looking at possibly BRX, okay? I'm actually looking possibly at GIX. So I'll be honest, this is not as good of a trade as the ACAD and the BRX. But those are just things I used last night. I scanned seven or 800 stocks using Finviz, this exact thing that I'm showing you right now. And I don't normally use Finviz, so if I can use it in five minutes, you can too. I put a few parameters in there, uh, and that was it, all right? Um, so that'll do it for this week's lecture. I hope you guys got a little bit out of that and have a little bit better understanding of how to swing trade and some recent stocks that I'm looking at. Um, and the main point I want you to take is swing trading takes more patience, so have the patience for it. If you're going to choose to swing trade, please be patient. Okay, don't take those stocks off the list just because it's not giving you a trade today. Sometimes it takes a week or two to materialize. Okay, so we'll get back at it again next week. Hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. I'll see you guys then. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.